Hello from Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. I'm here on the balcony of our room. We are by the luggage area where they transfer luggage to and fro from different resorts, like the bell services area. So you might hear a lot of luggage trolleys and stuff going past because we have been hearing a lot of that. There we go. Today we are heading off to Disney Springs this morning. We haven't been to Disney Springs yet this trip. We will be going on our last day as well, but we wanted to just go and do World of Disney a bit earlier in the day with the hope that it won't be too busy because if you go like later in the afternoon or evening, World of Disney could be very crowded. So we thought we would just go and take a look around there. Then we're probably gonna get a bus across to the boardwalk because I just wanted to show mum that whole area and show her the resorts and stuff there. And then we're going to Hollywood Studios. We've got a dining reservation at Cy Wi-Fi dining which is one of my other favorites and I really wanted mum to experience that because it's something very very different the theming is amazing I'm also going to be doing a walking Q&A today so I did that in Epcot last time and I've just put a request on Instagram for you guys to send your questions in so those are going to be answered throughout the day like I did last time I will just kind of stop and do your questions throughout the day because I just think that's a little bit of a different way than just doing a sit down Q&A video and a lot of you guys enjoyed it last time and said you would like to see it again in a different part so that's what I'm going to be doing today. And I'll just show you guys how close we are to the lift. We really lucked out with this room. So here we go. That's our room door. And here is the lift. So it's a very, very good one. Every morning, mum is just instantly, where's the giraffes? It's her favourite thing every morning. Let me go. Oh, we need to press the button. Oh, that's not good idea. <laughs> I'll just show you guys like where the lobby is in relation because Kidani Village is a bit smaller as well. So just come out the lift. And then we just walk past these doors and you can view the animals out there. And then here we are in the lobby. So the walk from our room is basically nothing. It's really, really nice when you're tired at the end of the park day. You can just get right up to your room easily, no walking. And the bus stops are just over here. The lobby's behind me, so nothing is a walk at all. It's a very, very good room that we've got. Nice and easy. Sometimes at some of the resorts, you do have quite a long walk to either the main lobby or to your room or to the buses or whatever, but everything is very close together for us here. Any minute for Disney Springs, by the look of it, literally one minute. And here we are at Disney Springs and unbelievably when I was here at the end of January, beginning of February with Catherine, I did not come to Disney Springs once. I don't think I've ever done a trip where I've not come here but I just didn't, I didn't get around to it so we're going to be doing this today. Today we're really here just to go to World of Disney and grab a quick coffee and then we'll be back on our last day. I'm going to go around the corner here to grab our Starbucks from the one that's in front of World of Disney and then for, I guess it would be brunch at this point, we've been eating at some very weird times on this yeah. Trip. I guess it'll be brunch. We're going to check out the Daily Poutine. So I have had stuff from there before and it's really good. Okay, we've got our coffees. I'm now here at the Daily Poutine. Let's see what they have. Somebody messaged me, I think it was on Instagram, and said the loaded frites. So French fries, queso, iceberg lettuce, pico de gallo, bacon and garlic ranch dressing is very similar to the Figaro fries or Figaro fries, however you say it that they used to have at Pinocchio Village House, so I think I'm gonna get those. So here are my loaded frites, and they do look exactly like the ones I used to get in Pinocchio Village House. So to whoever recommended these, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of who it was. It was either on Instagram or YouTube, but thank you very much for letting me know that these are here because they do look exactly like what I used to get. And they were 11.17 with tax. It's a massive portion, like really, really big. So definitely big enough for like a meal. And mum has, the lemon cake. Lovely. She wasn't sure what to get, so I recommended it as one of my favourites. Is it good? Really good. Yeah. Trying to get a bit of it with all the components is not the easiest thing. They do taste exactly like the ones I used to get in the Magic Kingdom. Oh my gosh, yay! Let's hope these stick around forever, please. And again, thank you to whoever told me they were here. These are really, really nice. Hey, I've had my poutine. It was so delicious. It was really, really good. It's quite loud. 
music and chair scraping around here, but hopefully you can hear me okay. I'm gonna do a few of these questions while we just have our coffee, because this is a very hot Starbucks today. It varies in temperature. Sometimes you get one that is like, it could take the enamel off your teeth if you drink it straight away. It's cooling off a bit now. Let's get to a few of these questions. So first of all, uh, Lara X Ellen says, have you vlogged this trip? Hope you're having a lovely time. Thank you so much, and yes, I have. I was saying to mum, the vlogs will probably be a little bit um, shorter maybe. I don't know, maybe they won't. But this has been very much a vacation, hasn't it? So it's been a bit different than normal. We've taken a lot more time just relaxing at the resort and stuff like that. Also, me and mum were talking about it this morning. Mum's really not that bothered about the attractions and the rides. She wanted to come on this trip to just see everything, didn't you? You're very much a... A wandering around and yes, looking, at things, looking yes. at things yeah so if we go to like Hollywood Studios later we'd like to do Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway but if the wait time is like 80 minutes mum's always just like nah <laughs> I don't want to do that um, so we've just been wandering around so whether or not um, the vlogs will probably be a bit different than usual but yes I have vlogged it in answer to the question Grant is saying your favorite place to eat in Magic Kingdom this changes up for me um, every sort of few years I would say at the moment I really love Pinocchio Village House the quick service place. I love the Caesar salad with the chicken, which mum and I had the other day. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah, and it's quite a nice sized portion. It's not too expensive. Um, it's one of my favorite things to eat for lunch there. Um, I think probably at the moment that's my favorite. In terms of sit down restaurants, I would say that is a tricky one for me. Magic Kingdom is not my favorite park for sit down dining, and that is for certain. I would have to say probably skip a canteen or maybe Tony's, but I didn't like what I had last time. Probably skip a canteen actually, to be honest, is my favorite at the moment. Is getting a pass holder for Disney worth it? So annual pass for Disney, they have gone up in price. I would say if you're coming from the UK, with the fact that you get the 20% discount, you may be able to make it work if you're doing two trips. If you are not doing two, it's definitely not worth it just for one trip because it would be cheaper to get a 14 day magic ticket from Disney. Um, so yeah, if you're doing two trips, you really need to do the math and see what it is at the time. And it depends what the exchange rate is as well as to whether it's worth it. Also, I'm speaking for the DVC Sorcerer Pass that I'm able to get. If you are getting the regular annual pass, I would say you probably have to do three trips to make it worth it. So definitely run the numbers because it's not always worth it to do that. Ed is saying, how is your mum finding the heat? What's her favourite park so far? So let's ask her, how are you finding the heat? I don't mind. Mum lived in Spain for how many years? 12. 12 years when she was younger, so she's very used to the hot weather. So heat-wise, much better than I do. And what's your favourite park so far? I knew you were going to say, you were looking forward to that one the most. And um, Hollywood Studios. Yeah, yeah, Mum really loved Hollywood Studios as well, but Animal Kingdom, you just love animals. So when we went yesterday, we focused entirely on basically doing all the walking trails and the safari. Yeah, Hollywood Studios, you like the music, I think, was the, the vibe, the vibe. Becca is asking, the US is known for big portions, but what food item do you think is too small a serving? That's an interesting question. I would have to say Frushi. Yeah, I, I could eat a little bit more Frushi. I mean, it's a perfectly decent portion, especially for a festival item, but I wouldn't complain if there was one more piece of it. Roberto Lasagna, love that name by the way, is saying, is it hard doing a Disney trip being alone? Not really. Um, the first time I ever did it was 2009, and now I love a solo trip. I must admit, I do ultimately prefer doing trips with friends and family. It's nice having someone with you just to chat to, um, but I don't really find it lonely on my own because you do talk to a lot of people. So I talk to cast members. I will quite often go to restaurants and sit at the bar. So places like Yak and Yeti, um, they are very chatty and they'll talk to you. You get talking to people in line. So you really don't feel like, I don't know if you're there for a week or 10 days or something that you haven't spoken to anybody. And I also call home a lot as well, don't I, when I'm away on my own. So no, I really, really don't find it difficult or lonely. If you feel like you might be uncomfortable eating alone, just make sure you've got your phone or something to read maybe, and then you can do that. You would feel less lonely probably at quick service locations, but even uh, dining reservations, I don't really find it difficult. But it does get easier the more you do it. But I would say anywhere that you are going to travel solo, this is the place. You never feel uncomfortable. It's just, yeah, absolutely fine. If anyone's thinking about doing a solo trip, just go for it would be my advice. And um, if you're feeling like not confident, just really try and find that confidence because it is totally worth it if you're thinking about doing it. Okay, let's do one more before we head into World of Disney. 
Disney. Do you want to find ones I haven't answered before or for a while anyway? Would you ever venture off Disney or Universal property to do something else in Florida? Um, yeah, I definitely would. I think because the channel is Disney in detail, for the most part, I know that that is what people are here for. Um, definitely on the trip I'm doing later this year, I want to go to Kennedy Space Center. I've been meaning to do that the last few trips and I will be doing that on the next one. And I'm staying at a different hotel on that trip, so I will be off property so there is a little bit more opportunity to maybe do something different. So that'll be all the questions for now. We're gonna go into World of Disney, take a look around, and then I'll answer some more when we get over to the boardwalk. I think that's what we're doing next. We should have time, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna head across to the boardwalk after this, so I'll do a few more there. Okay, heading into World of Disney. We haven't arrived as early as we wanted to, so it's probably gonna be fairly busy in here anyway, but never mind. First thing as you walk in, they always have what I would consider like the seasonal section. So before it was the 50th anniversary, sometimes it's Halloween, Christmas. Currently, it is the Disney 100 range. And they have the lounge fly bag and the ears. And of course, the spirit jersey as well. And foaming hand soap dispenser that dispenses your soap in the shape of a Mickey is currently $8. Just make sure you pack this in your checked luggage, not your cabin luggage. I learned that the hard way. And Becky and I recently went to the Disney 100 exhibition in Munich. So if you want to see that vlog, I will link it below. And I believe it's Mother's Day coming up in the US. We actually have Mother's Day earlier in the UK. So they have lots of mum items here. And they have this awesome munchlings display. It's like a really big kind of, what would you call this, trailer type thing with all the munchlings on. Let's see what he smells like. Okay, I can't smell anything. Maybe these big ones don't smell. Is it just these ones? I don't know. I can't smell anything on these guys. Maybe I'm not smelling it in the right place. And they have more munchlings here. Look at this s'mores one. He is so big. It's huge. How much is this? $59.99. And this one is the Avocado Breakfast Bagel Mike Wazowski. That is kind of a niche item that I never thought would exist. And up here, they have a smaller version of him. And they have Pooh Bear looking like a cinnamon swirl, I think that is. Oh gosh, and even more Munchling stuff. They have various accessories here, so like key rings. They also have Christmas ornaments there, a water bottle. Look at this Lotso cupcake thing. What is this, like a... Actually, what is that? Do you just store things in it? I'm not really sure what this is, but it's very cute though. Here we've got the ear section. Let's see what we've got, if there's any different ones. I think these are new actually. Yeah, these have just been released and they have a removable bow on them. So it's got like a little button popper thing underneath. It says Walt Disney World on the side. I'm not a huge fan of how this bow looks though, where you remove it. If that wasn't like that, if you see what I mean. But I do like the ears though. And these ones are also new, so these are the live action Little Mermaid ears. These are actually way better in person. I had seen them on Instagram, and they look nice then, but they're even nicer when you see them up close. These are very, very pretty. And they have these ones, which is the little guy from Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at the end. Those are super cute, I love those. I think most of these other ones we have seen before. I'm not seeing any new ones. Actually, I don't know if we've seen these Snow White ones. They're the 100 decade collection, I think. And on the subject of ears, Mum and I are both wearing ears from Magic Maker ears today. I think I wore these earlier in the trip, so I will link them below. And Mum has these ones, which are very cute too. And uh, this is the Haunted Mansion light up chess set. That's awesome. It's regularly 99.99 plus tax, and they currently have it on a special price of 49.99. And you can see it here out of the box. That's pretty neat if you're a chess fan and a Disney fan. And over here they have the Pixar section, which is a huge section here. And they have a display here of the new Little Mermaid items for the new movie, which I cannot wait for. I'm just so excited. I want it to be the 26th. They have a really nice denim jacket up there. I'll see if I can get a closer look at one on the rack, if there is one down here somewhere. Then they have this water bottle, which is very big size. They have a plush doll here. And this is the lounge fly bag that we saw yesterday in Animal Kingdom. I do really love that. And here's the jacket. I think it is a kid's one. It says ready to stand on the back. 
and I think we saw this in a store the other day. I do actually think this is awesome, this flounder it's shirt. Nice, yeah. yeah, it's nice pink, color. pink like pastel colour and then the flounder on. And they also have a dress with Ariel. I'm not as keen on the dress. I really do think this shirt is great though. This t-shirt's pretty nice. It's just like a very classic Disney World souvenir shirt, but I really like that. Lisa bought me a very similar one in bright pink when she came out here in, oh gosh, 1992 or something like that. Long time ago. And these pajamas are very fancy. They have a little embroidered castle on them. And they're like this emerald green color with like the cropped pajama bottoms. Oh, and they have a dressing gown too. The pajamas are 64.99, that's kind of pricey. And the dressing gown is also 64.99. I haven't seen a lot of different spirit jerseys on this trip, but I think that might be the time of year perhaps. It's very hot at the moment. It's not really spirit jersey weather. They do sell them year round, but um, I haven't noticed a lot of new ones. When we were here in February, there were tons of new designs. They do have this one here with the orange bird on, spread the sunshine. And they do have this range here. So it says Walt Disney World on the back. That's very cute. I bought some items that have that style of Mickey and Minnie on it. I think I had a notebook and a couple of other things uh, late last year. And they have a set of ears here as well. Oh, and they have this bag too, this lounge fly. That's actually pretty awesome. You've got the partner statue, Walt and Mickey in the middle there. I can see the Liberty Bell, I'm seeing Big Thunder Mountain, Small World, the Hatbox Ghost is there. You've got Stitch, I can see Space Mountain. This is actually very, very nice. If I remotely needed another lounge fly bag, this would be the one. I would definitely get this, but I, I do not need another one. How much is it? 88 so they range kind of from 70 I think up to about 110 so that one's kind of middle of the road this is very nice and they also have a denim jacket here too if you were taking a winter Disney World trip this shirt is also amazing wow I love this range they've got some really good stuff and this is the front of the jacket so again you've got the partner statue there you've got the dog from Pirates and the tiki birds at the bottom and they have pajama pants too I do love the pajama pants. Ah, here we go, this is the name of the range. They also have this light up table lantern. I bet that looks really cute and it's all lit up. And this, I think would be really nice to store utensils in, in your kitchen. I'm not sure if that's what it's for, but you've got all of the different characters there on the train. I love that, that's very cute. And um, we've got to check out the mugs while we're here. So if there's any we haven't seen so far. I actually like this one that says home with the castle. I think that's really simple, but really nice. And they do have this little mermaid mug as well. Sebastian, this Avatar AirPod case is really neat. And Haunted Mansion pop sockets. So you've got Madame Leota and then the wallpaper one. It's a set of two, 34.99. These keychain sets are pretty good. If you are looking for a little gift for several people, or maybe your kids are looking to take a little gift home for their friends, you can buy this set, and then there's several that they can just give one to each of their friends or something. That's quite cool. And that is $19.99. How many are in there? One, two, three, four, five. This is actually really neat too. If someone's been looking after your pets while you're away, you could bring them this back as a gift. I've just spotted a Haunted Mansion stationery set. This one was already open, so I'm just having a little peek inside. It looks like it has these that look like wax seals on them. And it includes um, 12 postcards, notepad, 30 envelopes, four pencils, two pens, faux wax seal sticker sheets, that's hard to say, a dress label sticker roll. That'd be a good gift for a Haunted Mansion fan. There's a very nice vanilla -y smell in the air. I think it might have been um, Amaret's Patisserie, maybe? I have good stuff in there. And I'm going to browse Sephora next time, I think. We're going to head straight to the boardwalk now. Have a nice little look around there. Mum's never seen that area before. I must admit, just browsing in the world of Disney back there and the merchandise stores that I've seen so far while we've been here, I haven't really seen anything that I want to buy. I did love that bag that I showed you, the lounge fly with um, the partner statue on and stuff, but I just don't need another lounge fly bag. But I really haven't seen a lot. Normally, I keep seeing things, ears that I want and spirit jerseys, but I really haven't on this trip seen very much at all that I want to buy. So 
I've been accidentally frugal so far. They have some really beautiful murals along here as you go towards the buses. I've never noticed these before, I think they must be new. And we want bus stop number 10, or bus gate number 10 I should say, for the boardwalk. And there's even more artwork down here, I love all of this. I'm certain this wasn't here last time I came. Although like I said I wasn't here in January so maybe it's been here a while. It's that hot we're having to walk in this uh, little narrow bit that's got shade. It's very very hot today. I think it's because there's no breeze, it's not breezy or windy today. Here we go at the boardwalk, love this resort. Get ready for it, it'll smell so good in here. Here is the lobby area, which is very beautiful. And I think they changed the seating a little bit here in Bellevue Lounge. I think there was like two sofas in the middle. It's a little bit different, I think, than last time. I've got you guys balanced somewhat precariously, so I hope you're not going to fall off. And there was quite a lot of noise around here at the boardwalk. They're doing a lot of construction, so do ignore any noise and stuff that is happening. Uh, so let's do a few more questions while we're here. Let's see, where did I get to? You guys have delivered on the questions. I've got a lot. Um, Eric is asking... See, weird noise. Eric is asking, have you been to the Toy Story restaurant yet? No, I haven't. I really tried to get a reservation. In the weeks leading up to the trip, I tried and tried every day and I just couldn't get anything. So unfortunately not, but at some point, hopefully, fingers crossed, I will be able to get one maybe for my next trip. And Cherry has a question for mum, actually, who is behind me. Um, Cherry is asking you, what is your favorite dress or play suit that you've made for me? Yes, the one I wore in Disneyland. Yes. Um, that one was really nice, yeah. I think my favorite one that mum has made is probably, you know the one that I blend in with the Epcot construction walls? It's like a one shoulder, um, sort of, well, like an off the shoulder play suit. And I'll try and put a picture in of it. I'll show you the one I mean. I'll show you both of the ones that I mean. I'll add a photo in. <laughs> em is asking, do you find that every time you're going, it's getting more expensive in terms of food and drink, etc.? So I would say I noticed a big difference after covid so i went in 2020 and then obviously i didn't go until the end of 2021 and i noticed then that the price went up for a lot of things um, like the annual passes and food and drink and stuff i can't say that i've noticed a massive difference since then certainly not every single time i go so like ohana i feel like there was a big jump in cost but then it hasn't gone up even more since then so yeah i did notice at one point things kind of went up quite high but recently like in the last year 18 months I haven't noticed things go up massively, um, certainly not every trip anyway. Nicora is saying, is there any hope for an off-site guest to get an Ohana reservation? So everyone can book at 60 days out, but if you're staying in an on-site Disney hotel, you can book 10 days of your trip. So say you were doing a two week trip, you can book the first 10 days. For someone who's staying off-site, you just have to do each day at 60 days out. So it is a little bit more difficult because people who are booking the 10 days can of course try and get Ohana for like towards the end of the trip and it's easier. There is hope. Um, you can sometimes have to go for a later time. Like we had 9.20, I think, on this trip. It was quite late in the evening. But definitely you can get one. Just keep trying. And sometimes there are cancellations. So I would say just keep trying as often as you can. And sometimes they do pop up. Rachel is saying, what are the weather and crowds like in early November? Worried as we usually do May. So it will be a little bit cooler when you go in November compared to May. Like we're here at the moment. It's very hot. Not the hottest I've ever known it. But it is very, very warm. November, sometimes you do end up in jackets and things, jeans. Um, it can be very changeable. So I've had very warm weather in November before and I've also been like cold in jackets. It's just the fact that it can be very changeable and it can change from one day to the next. It's literally gone from jackets one day to being hot the next day. So it's just a little bit more unpredictable. But I love November, it's one of my favorite times to go. And Sinead was asking, book to go next May. What is the weather like right now? It is hot and sunny. We've had no rain this trip so far. It's been, so some days have been windy, so it's been quite cool then. Today, there is no wind and it's very, very hot. So basically warm and sunny, hot and sunny, I would say, is the answer to that. Yarra Wizard Matt, interesting name there. Uh, if you could choose a new character to meet, who would it be? Mr. Toad, 100%. Bring a Mr. Toad meet and greet to the parks. I will be the happiest person ever. Can you even imagine how amazing that would be? What is one movie you wish they would make into a ride for the park? I wish they would make a roller coaster which is based on Monsters Inc. You know, with the doors, where they're kind of like zooming around on the doors. I think that would be a really awesome attraction. Uh, Daniel is asking, can you show us a day ticket, or I think you mean how much a day ticket is for Magic Kingdom or Epcot, please? Yes, I'm going back to both of those parks this trip. So just for you, Daniel, I will show as we go into the park what the ticket cost is for one day. 
and I'll just do one more while we're sat here and then we'll get underway to Hollywood Studios or first to have a look around the boardwalk then Hollywood Studios. Leah is asking, is the end of November and beginning of December warm enough for the water parks? It would be touch and go, I think. Usually one of them is still open. As to whether it's warm enough, it would be potluck depending on when you're here. I would say sometimes it'd be too cold and they actually do close them if it gets too cold completely. Um, other times they are still open and it would be up to you whether you feel it's warm enough, but I wouldn't um, bank on being able to do it at that time of year. It could potentially be too cold, but you might get away with it it depends it really does depend because it can be so changeable at that time of year but you can get some quite cool weather and then they will close them if that happens so that's going to be it for now i'm going to do some more questions as maybe i'll do a couple more around the boardwalk um, but then we're going to head off on the boat over to hollywood studios we've got dining reservation at sci-fi which i'm really excited for just come back to the main lobby and look who's here we've got daisy and chip and dale and here we are on the boardwalk love this area so much and during the day it's really not that busy so it's nice and relaxing it's a great place to come just for a stroll you've obviously got the boats you can go across to yacht club and beach club over there you can get a boat across to epcot and then go on the skyliner maybe if you were doing some resort touring you can walk to epcot you can walk to hollywood studios so it's a really really great location to stay as well if you stay in any of these resorts it is perfect especially if you're a huge epcot fan like i am and you can rent a Surrey bike as well, which is quite a fun activity. Really not sure what I would be like on one of these. Probably uh, a danger to everyone. And there's some useful Surrey bike information. All riders must have closed toe shoes. So that's important. No good if you're wearing flip-flops or sandals. Drivers must be 18 to operate the bikes and 21 after 8pm. No alcoholic beverages to be consumed during the operation of bikes. You must be tall enough. Loose fitting clothing, dresses, etc. are not recommended as they might get caught in the chain. That sounds uh, not good. Descending down the bridges should be done with extreme caution and brakes applied at all times. Riding sorry bikes is a physical activity and requires all riders to be in good health to participate. So there you go. You can see the cranes here, just all that noise you're hearing. They're doing some construction. Or well, they might be um, doing something to the trees. I'm not sure what they're doing there. I've never tried flying fish before. It is a, as the name would suggest, seafood heavy restaurant but they do other things apart from seafood so I definitely want to try it at some point and I still haven't been in Abracadabra I don't think unless I've totally blanked and forgotten but this is the bar that's kind of like the waiting area for the restaurant but people do just come here as well for a drink and another restaurant I still haven't tried is Trattoria Al Forno I've had reservations there before that I've had to cancel at the last minute because of a change of plans but I really do want to try breakfast there if I can sometime and Boardwalk Deli which was formerly the Boardwalk Bakery I think they still have the refillable mug station in there if you are staying at the Boardwalk you can uh, come and get your drinks there or anywhere if you have your resort refillable mug you can use them in any resort and they're now doing some construction here on the former ESPN location. I'm not sure what's going here. Oh, yes, I am sure, because it says on the side of the construction walls, the Cake Bake Shop. They've got some visuals on the side here, so you can see what kind of thing we can expect. Oh, that looks good. Yeah. Good choice. Oh yeah, coming 2023. This looks like it'll be a very good addition to the boardwalk. There's a artist rendering here. That'd be great, I think. And it looks like they're gonna do regular food too. They have some Eggs Benedict there. And here's a little shot all the way across the lake.
and um, someone was asking earlier about single day tickets so one day tickets Magic Kingdom is 159 Epcot is 144 154 for Hollywood Studios and 139 for Animal Kingdom so whoever asked that question there you go it's been answered in this very vlog <laughs> Yeah, I think it's all resolved. You've had no further finger scan. Light touch. Yeah, light touch. And now we are in, and we're actually pretty much right on time because we've got about 15 minutes to head over to Sci-Fi Dining for our reservation. And I might even do one of your questions while I'm in there. And then when we get out, I'll do a few more. We're meeting a friend for coffee. And like I said, then we've got Fantasmic this evening. So we're just gonna be having a good old wonder. It is very hot today. And it's looking a lot busier here at Hollywood Studios than it was the other day when we had that super short wait for Rise of the Resistance. We've got Mr. and Mrs. Incredible wandering through here. Mum's noticing it. She doesn't really feel the heat that much. Like she doesn't struggle in it because, like we said, she lived in Spain. But it's warm today, isn't it? Yeah, I'd say this is the warmest day we've had so far, for sure. Just here on the right, once you've been past ABC Commissary, is where you will find Sci-Fi Dining, which is our destination for dinner today. It's a bit of an early dinner. We are seated in our car, we're in the driver's seat this time. I'm normally a passenger or a backseat driver or whatever they call it. And this is the first place on this trip that we've had a menu with a QR code. We had that a lot when we were here in January and February. But actually, most of the places this time we've had a menu, but we are going to take a look at it on the phone this time. So we have got so appetizers, onion rings, fried pickles. Mm. Becky says they're really nice. Hello. Uh, spinach and artichoke dip with cashew cheese. Mm. Uh, wings, you don't like wings, do you? Um, black garlic Caesar salad, I've actually had that before. Don't like? Yeah, that was quite nice actually. So I'm having to put a light on just so you guys can see, but here is my Oreo milkshake. They've got new um, glasses that they're in. I think these are plastic ones now. And I also got a Fanta. Okay, so we're sharing some onion rings as an appetizer. Mum's looking a little overwhelmed at the, at the size of the onion rings, but they are really good here. I think there's two sauces. I'm not sure. I think one of them is a horseradish sauce. I'm not sure about the other one. Have a little, a little taste. Sour cream. Sour cream. How about the other one? I would say it's Thousand Island. Oh, Thousand Island. Oh, I quite like that. Okay, I'm putting some light on Mum's salad. Not just so you guys can see, but Mum actually... <laughs> Mum actually can't see her own salad, so I'm just putting some light on oh, so yes, she can yes. see, what's, see what's, what's on there before like, you start eating it. Lovely. You won't be able to see it while you're eating it. But... No, no, but I know whereabouts it is now. That's right. And I have the black garlic Caesar salad, and I've got some chicken with it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And we've got a little side of fries. Okay, we're all done in sci-fi dining and mum loved it, loved the atmosphere in there. We were laughing though because there were several accidents with people spilling drinks and stuff. And I think it's because you can't see, like it's so dark, I couldn't see my salad like when I was trying to eat it. We had to get the torch. Yeah, we had to get the torch out several times and uh, people were spilling drinks over, there was all sorts going on, but it was really good in there. And now we're just going to head into Walt Disney Presents real quick because I think mum will quite enjoy that. And I have noticed, so it says Walt Disney Presents is kind of the name of the theatre, but it does say One Man's Dream, which is what I always call it so it's kind of called both I think the movie is called one man's dream I'm not sure it's really interesting in here you basically get to learn a bit about Walt's life from the very beginning until the park opened obviously Walt passed before Walt Disney World opened unfortunately and it was Roy who actually opened Walt Disney World because poor Walt had passed just before it opened and not long afterwards Roy himself then passed so that's really sad but um, Roy was always the financial brains and Walt was always the creative so they made a very good team and we saw some of these early character plush at the D100 exhibit in Munich last week so last week or the week before last <laughs> and um, I think it was a Mickey that we saw there but here we've got Minnie, Pluto and then a mini Minnie and Mickey <laughs> it says here that Walt worked at this desk during production of many early classics including Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and the Silly Symphonies so that's pretty awesome to think that Walt actually sat here to do his work. Just rushing into the film. <laughs> Thank you. That was 
really good watching the little Walt Disney movie. I really wanted mum to see that because I think for anyone it's their first time, it's a really cute little way to understand how everything came about. It was really good, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Very nice. It always makes me emotional watching it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, so it's really good. And um, I thought I'd just do a couple of questions while we're here. Also, I was just saying to mum, I think we're going to change our plans for this evening. We were just reassessing what our evening plans are. So we were going to stay here and watch Fantasmic. But I basically said to mum, we've got the option really of Fantasmic or the extra hours in Epcot. Because by the time we were done with Fantasmic, got out and got across to Epcot, we likely would lose the whole extra two hours. So mum has said that um, she thinks we should go to Epcot for the extra hours to do Ratatouille and the Frozen ride at least those two because they do seem to have a long wait time all the time so although we're in Epcot tomorrow we're not going to want to stand in line for like 100 minutes for the Ratatouille ride so we're going to meet my friend Amy for a coffee we're going to do that now then we're going to head across to Epcot so that is a slight change of plan but let me just do a couple of these questions while we're here Clara Bella is asking do they still have plenty of the UK floral ears the ones with the little Union Jack bow I think are the ones you mean um I have seen them but perhaps when I go around the next couple of days in the vlogs I will see whether they're still there because I think you're saying you're there in August and you're hoping to get some I have seen them they do still have them at the moment Steph is saying how do you keep your makeup so fresh in the parks all day um I do get this question a lot if I'm totally honest I don't really 100% no is the answer to that. Mum's laughing. Um, I use my fan a lot. So if I feel like I'm sweating and like my face is really hot and sweating, I do use my fan. So that's one thing that makes a massive difference. Um, just to let you know what I use, I use the Ordinary High Adherence Primer and I use the Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Foundation. And for powder, I use Beauty Pie One Powder Wonder. So that's basically what I use on my face. This is my makeup that I put on first thing this morning. Um, I haven't done anything to it so I'm a little shiny here and there but as you can see for the most part it's still on my lipstick is it's not called Kat Von D anymore but KVD I think they still call it and yeah it's still on so that's what I use I don't really know how it stays on it just does I think I'm quite lucky I don't tend to um, get very sweaty. Gaffine is asking, does your mum like scary rides? No, 100% absolutely. She's speaking from the distance there. She does not at all. Um, if you think I'm a ride wimp, mum really doesn't like big roller coasters, anything scary. You're not, just not. I don't like to up and down. No, no, she's not a fan. She, she likes very calm, sedate rides. Okay, I'll just do a couple more quick ones here. Which is your favorite Fab Five character? I think my favorite is probably Minnie out of the Fab Five. Definitely Minnie, I love her. And Zoe is asking, is your Grand Floridian room just being renovated? So yes, we have, um, or we had, I should say, because we've moved out of it now, the room at Big Pine Key, is it called? Yeah, Big Pine Key, which they've renovated into DVC Resort Studios, and they've just done that, so it's fairly new. The room was just something else, wasn't it? Amazing. Yeah, everything about it, and it was so big. It was so light, it was so airy, it was just... Yes, I couldn't say anything about it that was bad. It was just absolutely amazing. And I think they are doing a lot more refurbishments at the Grand Floridian. So the original hotel rooms, like the non-DVC ones, they're all getting refurbished as well. So I think some of them were quite dated, to be honest, considering it was such an expensive resort to stay in. So it's good that they are refurbing all the rooms. So with that said, we're gonna go and see if we can find Amy, have a quick coffee, and uh, then head off to Epcot by the time we've done that. And if you're ever looking to get away from it all while you're here at Hollywood, studios you could just come back here because there is not much doing back here it's very very quiet i think they do have meet and greets back here maybe or they used to they definitely don't have them right now three hours later so it is goodbye to hollywood studios for this trip we've just had our coffee it was really lovely um yeah me and mum are now going to go on the skyliner across to epcot and just see if we can catch ratatouille during those extra hours so we have made it over to Epcot and unfortunately I just checked the app as we were coming in and Ratatouille is down. I cannot believe it. That is literally the reason that we came here. But never mind, we still have a little bit of time for the extra hours and we're going to go and ride Frozen because that always has a big line during the day and then that way tomorrow when we're here in the day we can ride Soarin' and Living With The Land and those probably won't have a huge wait time and we can do the rest of the World Showcase. So we did just want to get here tonight to do at least one 
one of those two attractions that always have a big wait but that is a bit of a bummer about Ratatouille but fingers crossed we might get to do it tomorrow depending what happens but while we're here I just thought I would do a few more of your questions we had a lovely time with Amy and Rachel we were just hanging out with them having a really nice chat for ages which we really enjoyed so um, yeah I'll do a few more of your questions now and then we're gonna get underway to go over to Frozen Savannah asks favorite ride in the Magic Kingdom Haunted Mansion has to be absolutely love it uh, Joanne is saying which character breakfasts would you recommend I really like Garden Grill I think Garden Grill is an excellent one I think the character interaction is really really good there and I like the food too and also I think probably Crystal Palace I love the Winnie the Pooh characters and I've done a very similar one over at Disneyland in California so those would probably be my favorites Kirby Cool Moves is saying is bug spray a must in the Disney parks I actually use something called skin so soft from Avon which is not even a bug spray but it functions as a bug spray and it's absolutely amazing I don't know why it's so good but it really really is and um, I always do put it on every single day around my ankles around the back of my knees and around my elbows because that is always where I get bitten um, I don't know if you necessarily need it every day but you do need it if you go like the Polynesian Beach at night time I got bitten so bad there so I would say yes try and put it on every day if you are prone to being bitten some people seem to be more prone to it than others I definitely do get bitten let's just do one more here uh, once upon a pain is saying Grand Floridian or Polynesian before I would have said Polynesian is my favorite to actually stay at this music is very exciting all of a sudden I love this. So that's put me off the flow of answering my question. Um, yeah, so I would have said Polynesian and I do still think overall that's my favourite but having stayed in those new resort rooms at the Grand Floridian, in terms of the actual rooms I would now say those are better. Those resort rooms at the Grand Floridian at Big Pine Key are absolutely stunning and so comfortable, so relaxing, so beautiful. So yeah, I would say those are probably my new favourite rooms in all of Walt Disney World. As we're walking along everyone's telling us that Ratatouille's down. It's like, no, we're pressing on to Frozen. I seem to be a little bit doomed when it comes to that ride. I always seem to just not be able to do it for one reason or the other or it just goes down every time I'm about to ride it. France is looking so beautiful. I don't know if the camera is doing it justice there. Apparently the walkway is closed that way so we have to go all the way around which is really quite far. Hopefully we can make it across to Frozen just about in time to get onto it. That's really annoying. And for those wondering about food during the extra hours, the Yorkshire County Fish Shop seems to still be serving. I didn't think that they would still be open at this time of night. So it is possible to still get some food and it's very quiet back here in the UK. So we've decided the most sensible plan, considering the location we're at right now, we're going to go to the Land Pavilion and ride Soarin. Okay, here we go. I think it's going to be a walk-on at this time of night. Doesn't seem to be many people around. It might just be us. Oh, there's a few people heading on. Mum's a tiny bit nervous about this ride, but I have assured her she'll be fine. Fasten your seatbelts and inserting them into the buckle on your right. Soon you will be airborne. So if you or your little aviators have a fear of flying or of heights, you might want to wait for your party if you arrive at the gate. here again tomorrow to ride living with the land and I think mum might enjoy the little film the awesome planet I think it's called over there oh, oh. Oh. Oh, oh. and spaceship earth is looking majestic as ever just as we're leaving and we're going to be right back here again tomorrow okay we are now at the entrance to Epcot I'm not sure what's going on with this lighting because I've got spaceship earth behind me there and everything is very very blue and purple but I thought I'd just do a final few questions for you guys before I close out this vlog so just a big Disney kid asks what are you and your mum's favorite treats so far on the trip we definitely love the carrot cake whoopie pie it's now called or whoopie cake or something whatever it is it used to be the carrot cake cookie but it really is a cake from the trolley car cafe at Hollywood Studios and I would say also the fruit Nutella waffle from Sleepy Hollow in the Magic Kingdom. We both really enjoyed both of those. And MZ is asking, what park would you say was the most accessible for someone in a wheelchair? All of the Disney parks I think are great for wheelchair users. They do have everything set up for everybody to be able to ride everything. They are very used to making sure that everyone can enjoy the parks. I would say if you're in a wheelchair, one of the bigger parks might be slightly easier. So like Epcot or Animal Kingdom, 
where you tend to have a lot of the walkways are less crowded than somewhere like Magic Kingdom. So maybe in that respect, I would say it might be a little easier to move around, I guess. But all of the parks are very well set up for wheelchair users, for sure. Sophie is asking, do you have your next trip planned? Yes, I do. I will be back in Disney World later this year. And I'm also hoping to go back to Disneyland Paris. When the weather is slightly warmer, I feel like I've still got a lot more to do in those parks. So I'm hoping to do that as well later this year. And Hargreaves Gracie says, Target or Walmart? Target will always be my favorite. Walmart is good for your groceries because it's a little bit cheaper, um, but it's not as nice to walk around. It can be a little bit frantic and crazy in there. Target is 100% my favorite. And I'll just do one more here. H McFad is saying, do you find Animal Kingdom Lodge too far away from the other Disney parks? I really don't find that at all. All of the parks are accessible by bus from Animal Kingdom Lodge. And although Magic Kingdom it takes the longest to get to, it really doesn't feel that bad at all. I've never felt like it feels like an excessively long journey or anything like that. So yeah, it's absolutely fine and I don't find it a problem at all. And I'm in extremely bright pink colour now. I'm every single colour since we're here at the entrance. And that is going to be it for this vlog. I'm going to wrap this up now rather than when we get back because this is just the perfect place. It's my favourite park. We've absolutely loved today. Mum's been loving everything about the trip. We had a really lovely chat with Amy and Rachel, didn't we? That was so nice. It's been a very nice relaxing day today and finishing it here in Epcot. Getting to do Soarin', that's one thing less for us to do tomorrow because we've got lots to do tomorrow. Yep. And uh, we're thinking about maybe doing a little walk up at Nine Dragons tomorrow. We discussed that earlier, so that would be good. So I hope you guys enjoyed today. I hope you enjoyed another wandering Q&A in Hollywood Studios and in Epcot and at the resorts. It was a bit everywhere today. It was a wandering Q&A all over Disney World. So if you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and tap the bell icon so you're always notified when I upload a new vlog. A huge thank you to everyone who said hello today. We met so many of you guys and you're always so lovely. We love our little chats with you. So hello to all of you who came up to us today and to everyone at home who was so supportive watching these vlogs, supporting on Patreon, over on Instagram, everything you guys do, you are awesome and you helped to make these vlogs happen. I'm very, very appreciative to each and every one of you. So that's going to be it from us tonight. We are going to be back here in Epcot tomorrow. I can't wait for that. More flower and garden, more snacks, more Epcot. But I hope you guys are all having a great day. This very epic music is a good ending to this vlog and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye. Oh, and bye from mum too. Bye. <laughs> She's been very on it with her photo taking this trip. I mean, you have to get those Spaceship Earth photos, especially the nighttime ones. Look at that. So good. I am so happy when I'm in Epcot, I'm eating sushi. It's this time of night, it's golden hour.